uh, just about uh, a year and a half ago um, in, as a, in the role of Chief of Strategic Initiatives. And you know, open data was something that MTA had been working towards for some time, um, but you know, we had elevated it with the, the change in leadership at the chair level to make it part of strategic initiatives and it being that important to us. Um, and so hopefully that, that sends a, a, another message to this group about how we're trying to move in the direction I think everyone on this call is very uh, simpatico with. Um, in terms of just a little bit of my background, you know, I, I've uh, loved data for a long time. I was thinking about this uh, call, the folks who make this up. And you know, for me, uh, back as a teenager, got into what was fantasy baseball and sort of calculating my own stats for my teams and everything back in the day before um, that apps would do it for you. Um, but that continued on to sort of my work uh, at American Airlines, where I was involved in um, demand forecasting for all like 4,500 flights a day and figuring out how much to overbook planes by and um, what, how much connecting traffic there was various certain cities. Um, and that led to sort of a, a career in business for a while before I landed at the city, where I had the pleasure of working with uh, the Department of City Planning, um, including managing their technology group over there. And I see a bunch of people on this call from that and, and, and participated in a few open data forums in that role. Um, but really there I started to see the power of um, getting you know, public information available to the public. Um, these are public entities that run on behalf of taxpayer with taxpayer dollars often and are here to serve you know, New Yorkers. And city planning had that ethos even before I got there and, and really tried to lead in terms of putting data sets out there um, with new technology in the last decade, we've tried to make it even easier and more uh, quickly the turnaround times and, and in a format that people can use with all the metadata that you need to make sure you're using it properly, but really getting towards a, a self-serve model. Um, when I joined the MTA a year and a half ago, I was, I was fortunate enough to have uh, Andy Kuziemko introduced to me, who had a similar you know, mindset as many folks in this call do, and, and a real desire to get out of the towers of the MTA and have a centralized you know, force, you know, proselytizing the importance of data and analytics. And he had a vision for that, which we're on the journey to realize in a, in a group within, you know, again, central MTA headquarters that drives consistency in data usage and, and certain standards around um, how we maintain it and how we keep it clean. And, and, and a big part of that is also getting it public. Um, Lisa Mayfield Fiedlers comes in that role and, and taking much more of the day-to-day, -day, like every single day, trying to make our open data better. Um, you know, we, uh, before I let them talk a bit about their plans, I guess I would put out there, we are striving to do a lot more. We, we know we can be better and, and it's uh, rarely a chance of like, should we make it public? I mean, we're, we're making it public as fast as we can. It's more of a, how do we get it organized in a way that's gonna be digestible for the public? And how do we sequence those things so that people can use it without having to list a, a bunch of other questions or find errors in it that we can find ourselves if there's more time. Um, so please know from the very top, we're really committed to getting much more open data out there, but we want to do it in a sustainable way, in a way that it, we, we know the data is accurate. And in many cases, that's the, the slowdown and some of the things that you'll be no doubt asking for, um, but it's not, it's not a lack of intention. Um, I look forward to your questions and folks telling us kind of what they like and don't like about it. We'll, we'll try not to be too defensive uh, as we get into this. Um, there are certainly things we, data we'd like to get that we even we can't get, uh, and so you might hear that here and there. Uh, but we'll be taking notes and thinking about how we can be better partners for this community of stakeholders you know, that really are the folks that, that drive us and make your question, you know, push us to go further than maybe we would go on our own. Uh, and we need that tension in the system. Um, so let me uh, take no more of your time, but hand it over to Andy to talk a bit about um, what his group does and, and Lisa for the, sort of the day to day. But I, I thank you all for your interest and, and we'll do the best we can with the questions that come in. Okay, uh, thank you, John. Uh, my name is Andy Kuzemko. As John mentioned, I lead the new data and analytics group. I've been at the MTA for over eight years now, um, but also consider myself like John, uh, a longtime data person uh, and uh, have been uh, you know, using a lot of that uh, background uh, here at the MTA in my work. Um, this group that we're, I've started here with John is only about a year old. Uh, and so the, the goal of the group is to create a center of excellence within the MTA for the uh, you know, management and usage um, and sharing of data within the MTA, both internally first, but then of course also externally, which is what this, this group is about. Uh, that's obviously a very broad definition. Uh, so a few specific things that we are uh, trying to do. Uh, the first is to, I don't think you can centralize everything at the MTA, it's just too big, but you can centralize certain functions that should be centralized. So one of that is of course, managing open data. Whereas before that was pretty broadly done, we're, and Lisa will talk a lot more about this, like we're kind of bringing that, um, you know, in, into a much more organized fashion. Uh, and the other one related to that is public metrics. So 
folks on this call might be aware that we have a lot of different dashboards out there. We are slowly consolidating those based on open data and, and streamlining that. Um, another is to uh, upgrade some data pipelines that we have or to create data pipelines where currently what we have is a much more like manual or ad hoc process that we just do repeatedly. Um, so you know, there's a lot of work there to like make data easier to use at the MTA and easier to work with for ourselves. And as we do that, we should be able to share, as John was saying, a lot more uh, in the future once, uh, once we've done that. Uh, another goal of ours is to uh, build expertise on our key data sources. Um, I think for any big company, that, especially a big legacy company like the MTA, there's certain people who know how certain things work. That's not generally shared. Uh, John was talking about metadata. That's uh, a concept that we need to really bring <laughs> to the MTA uh, so that people understand their data and, and that can be accessed um, you know, more generally. And so that's a, a big piece of work for us that we're, do we're doing. Um, and then I think lastly, uh, a goal for this uh, COE, as I called it, is to take on like the hardest data problems that we have around here, um, you know, to, to bring uh, more modern and, and more powerful tools to the, to the uh, different questions that we have. So, you know, use techniques like modeling or queries on very big data sets, um, you know, or more advanced algorithms that a data scientist would, would use. Uh, so that's stuff that we've already been doing. We're going to be doing a lot more of that uh, in the months and years ahead. Uh, lastly, just to tie this back to open data, um, I think open data has the right home now. <laughs> uh, John and I are passionate about the subject. Lisa is extremely passionate about this subject. Uh, and we have like the right team uh, to really advance this uh, as, as it should be. Um, so I think that's really great. And, uh, and as I mentioned, Lisa will be talking more about that. Um, and then I think the last thing I'll say is that, you know, kind of my day to day as you know, Lisa's day to day is really on open data. Mine is more about uh, getting more uh, information out of our data for internal uses that we can better manage uh, our own operation. But as we do that, the, the next step, of course, is, well, if we can do this internally, why can't we share this more externally? So I think those two things dovetail really nicely. And I'm very excited for what we'll be able to do with the MTA's data and then soon after what we'll be able to share. Um, with, uh, with this group and with everybody. So uh, I think that's an, enough about that uh, and about myself. So uh, Lisa, why don't you go ahead? Hi everybody, just quickly, my name is Lisa and I manage more of the day-to-day -day work of MTA Open Data Program. I am so excited that we have 70 people here joining who care about the MTA and our data. That's amazing. Um, so really happy to have you all here and to have this chance to talk a bit about what we've been doing the past, I guess, a little less than a year and really um, get some feedback from you all about like what direction you want to see this program go, what data you're excited about. Um, so yeah, we'll be giving a brief overview and then we'll have time for maybe like a two-way Q&A. We'd love to answer some of your questions and also get some of our questions answered as well. So Andy, I'll pass it back over to you. Sure. Thank you, Lisa. Um... I have a lot of different windows covering up the screen here. Let me try to move So uh, the history of the open data at the MTA, um, I'll go through this quickly, but in, in some sense, the MTA has been sharing data publicly for a long time, right? We have been putting out a board book. Um, we recently uh, made our board book a lot more like user-friendly and a lot slimmed down. Um, but for years, we had a very like high volume board book that we put out that had lots of charts and graphs and tables and it. it was probably our main way of sharing public data, uh, you know, for better or worse. It was maybe the most user friendly, but there was a lot of information there. But it was very high level, very aggregated, right? So you would get like monthly stats, you wouldn't get daily or, or you know, trip level stats or anything like that. Um, we also had a bunch of public uh, dashboards that kind of came later, maybe in the last 10 years. Um, many of which are still up and running, although these will tell you what we're trying to do with those. Um, we have many uh, FOIA requests from journalists and other advocate, advocacy groups. Um, we, about 10 years ago, uh, in various buses and the number trains and later the letter trains, uh, started doing real-time feeds, which is another form of public data. Um, we then have, and still have, uh, to some degree, kind of data sets here and there on our website that aren't on the open data portal, not really in a dashboard, they're just sort of data sets you can find. Um, and then of course, most recently, we, um, we've been uh, publishing open data through, you know, through these, uh, the New York State, New York City portals. Um, 
anyway, so that was all kind of the past. But as this group knows, uh, in 2021, uh, Governor Hochul signed the MTA Open Data Act, which requires us to participate in the New York State program, not just to do our own thing, as we had been doing, uh, but to uh, participate in New York State's program. Um, I don't know that there, I guess there's maybe opinions on that. I think it's a great thing, um, you know, and it gives us sort of a direction to follow, whereas before we were kind of doing whatever came to mind. Now we're really going to, uh, we have a, a program to comply with, which I think is helpful. Um, and the spirit of the law, I don't remember the exact legislation, maybe it's actually the letter of it, but the idea is that the MTA should share everything that's not an undue burden to share, and that's not like private or sensitive information, of course, about customers or employees. Um, so that's a really broad definition. Um, I think the trick there is undue burden. As I was mentioning, a lot of our stuff today isn't really what you call automated. Some of it is, and that's probably already being shared. Um, but the goal is to make, is to reduce that burden, so to speak, um, so that we can end up sharing more and more information. Uh, we're a public authority, and I think everybody here basically wants to share a lot of stuff, but the idea of sharing today um, with the kind of difficulty we have of, of creating that information is would be, would be challenging. Um, so kind of what we've been doing since 2021, I think this started with um, what you might call like basic compliance, like a new law was passed, so we started complying. Um, but, you know, as you might guess, like basic compliance doesn't really require that much. Um, and so we want to move well beyond that. Um, what we're doing now, and I'll let Lisa talk more about this, is uh, cleaning up of our existing materials. So our current open data data sets have some issues that could be, you know, clear, better metadata, easier to use, uh, and our public dashboards. Um, I think Lisa will give you some examples of stuff that we're doing there. Um, more to do on both those fronts, but that's kind of our current focus. Uh, we're also starting to uh, get into automation of our open data data sets, again, to like reduce that burden of uh, sharing data. Um, and then I think in the months or, or year ahead, uh, where I really want to get to is you know, sharing more and more detail and more insight into our data, um, both in dashboards and the open data site. Um, but that requires you know, work from my team and others to uh, actually create those data sets. So that's gonna be a little bit of a further ahead, but uh, definitely where we, where we want to go. Um, and I guess the last thing I should mention is that uh, this moved, I guess it was last summer, uh, so about for like the last six or nine months, this has been with my team. Before that, it was in the customer department. Um, I think it was thought like at the time, well, customer sort of public relations, they're customer facing, external facing. So open data is, is public. Uh, so that makes sense. Uh, also, my team didn't exist in 2021. So maybe if we had, it would have gone straight to us. But uh, once we kind of put out our shingle, so to speak, um, and became a... <clears throat> A group within the MTA was pretty clear that this was like the right place for this function to go. Uh, as I said, now this function uh, sits with a group that really, really cares about this and is passionate about data and uh, the public uses of it. So uh, hopefully we can see, hopefully you've already seen the last, you know, six months or so that we've had this, uh, some improvements in this area. Um, and then hopefully the next, uh, next year, you're seeing a lot more um, now that it's sitting with us and we're kind of getting our feet under us on this topic. So. I'll stop there. And uh, Lisa, I believe you're next. Okay. Um, thanks, Andy. So yeah, as Andy mentioned, the MTA has been sharing data in some form for a long time. And I think for better or worse, that laid the foundation of where our open data program is at today. So since summer of 2022, since we've started working on this, um, a huge thing we've made progress on is cleaning up some of our process flows so that open data is used as a source for our public reporting rather than an output of it. So what I mean by that is when we started this program, we had data sets on the portal that were being exported from a dashboard with little consideration into what fields were being exported from the dashboard, whether it captured the necessary information, and kind of at its worst, a lot of these data sets were exported from some data visualization tool. And then there was a lot of manual copying and pasting to get the data in the format we needed to share on the portal. So it was just a backwards process where the end of our pipeline was the data set rather than using that as the beginning source for our visuals. So we've cleaned this up for quite a few of our agencies. Um, and as a result of that, we now have new and improved data sets for a lot of our subway and bus data sets. We have better fields, we have a, a data flow in place so that these can be actually updated monthly. 
Um, we also have improved data flows for our elevator and escalator data set, which is always a hot topic at the MTA. Um, so yeah, I encourage you all to take a look at these. I can drop a link in the chat to data.ny.gov, which is the state portal, and you all can check out these data sets and more. Um, another big point of progress was launching our open data visualization tool, metrics.mta.info. The goal of this is for every visual on this site to be built off of open data. And as we progress through cleaning up the data sets, this is becoming more and more the case. Right now we have a majority of our subway and bus visuals pointing to open data sets. And I think this is really exciting because that way you as the public know that we at the MTA are using the same exact data that you all have access to, to report on our performance metrics. And getting the MTA to actually use the data that's on our portal has been a really big win for improving the quality making sure it's up to date. And I don't know, we've always talked about how like our open data program is not successful if we are not using our data sets internally that are on the portal. So this has been a really big win is launching that tool and pulling from open data. Um, finally, a huge win for us has just been improving the internal coordination and building relationships necessary for open data to succeed at the MTA. So again, Andy mentioned how like two years ago, this team didn't exist. I didn't work here two years ago. A lot of people on this team are also new. And it's been a learning curve to just meet the right people we need, whether it's people within IT or the data owners for at all these different agencies that have to be bought into this program for it to succeed. Um, I think externally, maybe people don't recognize that the MTA has historically operated as like six different companies. And so this is a really big step to just like building those relationships and setting that foundation. But I think we've been really successful here we've had people approach us and asking, hey, can we share this data on the open data portal at some point? And that's just been a, a great win. Uh, so all this progress could not have been possible without the data analytics team. I know some of you guys are watching, so thank you everyone for your help. Big shout out to the customer team who started a lot of this work. And also a huge shout out to our contacts at New York State Open Data, especially Diane, who has been instrumental in getting a lot of this work done. Um, so quickly, some future upgrades to look forward to. Just like we've done with a lot of our subway and bus data sets, we'll be going through agency by agency and improving their data flows and ultimately the data sets we share on the portal. So if you're joining us from Long Island Railroad, Metro North, or paratransit, know that we are coming for you and you'll see me in your inbox pretty soon. Uh, we also are gonna be moving beyond performance data, which was kind of our starting point for this program and move into different types of data. So we have real-time data that we kind of share separately at the MTA right now. We also have a lot of interesting data sets through our headquarters on things like finance data and hiring data. And we want to make sure that we're sharing all of that as well. Um, we also have a lot of work to do to improving metadata and data quality. I think this is also just a product of like the way MTA has historically shared data without metadata at all, because it was through a PDF or through some platform that didn't support that. So we have been making a big effort to improve this as we go through agency by agency and improve those existing data sets. And I think we can do an even better job moving forward with that. Um, Last two quick things, our data viz site, you can check it out now. I'd recommend doing so on a desktop because it is not very mobile friendly. And so we are working to fix that. And we also do have an MTA open data webpage on MTA's main website. It's not up to date and we don't have a good way to like connect things to um, the state portal right now, but we are working on that. And I think we would like that to be the home for where we're sharing information moving forward. So that's a brief overview about the open data program right now. I guess what I will do is we have some good questions in the chat. So maybe Andy and John, I will pass a few of those along to you all. And then I'd also love to get some questions on our end answered in the chat. But maybe I'll start with a question from uh, Maha, uh, who says, my question would be, 
how should the public be educated about MT open data and how, how do they even know that it exists in the first place? So Andy, I know that we've talked a bit about some outreach in the future we want to do about this. Do you want to start there? I mean, not to be like obvious, but I think this session and ones like it that we do in the future is obviously a big step in that direction, right? So I don't think we were participating in forums like this until recently. So we'll be doing all sorts of stuff like this. And I know uh, Lisa is like very keen on this and is always telling me about the next opportunity to do something like this. So uh, you'll be seeing us in places like this. Um, I mean, I think the other, other thing I'd say is that uh, I hope there's a bit of like a snowball effect on this. Like as we get more open data out there, I think people will start using it more and then they'll encourage us to put more out there and we will. And so hopefully over the next you know year or two or whatever the time frame would be as fast as possible, we'll see like more things being done with our open data um, and more awareness of it. Um, beyond that, like I'm not a um, internet advertising expert. I'm not sure how else to get the, the word out, but I'm hoping that, you know, among the folks who care about this stuff, that the things that we're doing will be, you know, like this will be enough to uh, spread the word. I don't know, John, if you had any other thoughts about how to, uh, how to get people using this, uh, this data. No, I mean, I, you know, I think, you know, I think groups like this and folks telling their friends, uh, the word of mouth seems to be the best way, given that the, the, the dynamic nature of these networks. And so, you know, I, I think we've got, you know, obviously landing pages and things like that. And we're always open to ways that, that we could use those more effectively to sort of promote what we're doing, um, you know, whether it's sort of internally or externally, uh, at least uh, you may indicate it, you know, the idea that our own company would use open data just to get data they need internally is something we're striving for in many cases. Um, and, and encouraging those folks to know it would may lead to them discovering other things on there. But I think I think you know telling your friends is the main is is, is the, the main thing now. Um, and saying you know very compliant and, and try to be a, a you know a role model for other agencies, maybe not as large on kind of what can be done uh, that we're trying to you know keep pace. Um, you know I would I would you know say there is you know in MTA's situation you know, we are. And we've lost a lot of riders, uh, folks who, who follow may know we're down 30% from pre-COVID levels. That's a lot of revenue and a lot of pressure on our expenses, obviously, you know, as there should be. Um, this is a group that's grown despite that. Um, that being said, it's, it's very small and there's a limit, again, to what we can do in a short period of time. Um, but we're open for ways to make it more useful for others and hopefully get some accolades for what we're trying to do and, and what you're seeing in practice. But open for ideas if people want to put them in the chat and we'll, we'll have a look at it after the call and see if there's some quick things we could do to make it more obvious that we're, you know, we're trying to be part of the solution here, not, not part of the resistance. Thank you, Baz. Um, we have a question from Ariel, who is wondering if there's a mechanism for people to communicate what they've built with MTA's open data with the appropriate MTA team. So yes, we would love to hear about any tools that you've built using our open data. Uh, you can contact us at this email, I'll drop it in the chat. Um, and yeah, would love to hear about anything you've done using empty open data. I think something we've been thinking about is a way to share links to these tools, either on our existing web page or some other forum. Maybe it'll be a data set to different links of tools that um, are built off of MTA data. And so we'd love to highlight those. A question from Justin. So as an MTA employee, it's understood that the data resources at this organization are plentiful but disperse, which makes it difficult to find and access what you need. So how are we identifying or uncovering data sources at the MTA? And what are our strategies to consolidate the data for dissemination? This seems like an Andy uh, question yeah. if I've ever heard of it. <laughs> uh, you said that was Justin who asked yes. that? Yes. Uh, Ju Justin, you, you seem to have described like 80% of the difficulty with my job. So uh, like, thank you for, for the question. Um, I mean, how we're doing it, it, I think it's a question of like, where do you start, right? Um, there's lots and lots that you can do, as, as you said, as a huge organization, you can kind of look anywhere and find something data-wise worth working on and improving and, and hopefully eventually sharing. Uh, but it really just is a question of where to start. So I think what we've been doing is that we have uh, areas that are already ones that we work on, already ones that are in open data and are publicly reported. So you might think of like the tip of the iceberg as the board report, right? Um, the questions, and then it kind of 
related to that are questions that we very commonly get asked about in the press. Uh, so it's like those, those like key, very top of mind for like journalists, um, political folks, uh, advocates, those kind of data sets would be the, the first. And we're already kind of sharing most of those that you can imagine we share more of those. Um, but then you're kind of getting to the next tier down, which I think is where we want to start focusing, which is, um, you know, more granular information. I saw someone here mentioning like, you know, static tables on like stations and bus stops, like to sort of more useful uh, dimension tables for folks who want to work with our data more easily instead of having to create their own or infer these things. Uh, I think that would be really valuable. So, um, you know, I think we start with what we're already doing, we're trying to do it better. And then uh, maybe the third thing I'd say is as new things come up that become important, um, a lot of times through those same venues, but including ones like this one. So if we're hearing from this group, uh, you know, it'd be really valuable and seem easy to do is if you just guys publish this, well, we can put that on the list, right? Um, so I'd say it kind of goes in those in those three directions. Um, it's it's kind of how, how we're approaching this, but it is a huge challenge. Great. Thanks, Andy. Um, another question we have from an internal employee, Jonathan, um, who has a question about a specific data set. Uh, this is also, I think, yeah, an Andy question. So about a month, ago, a month ago, the daily ridership data set officially migrated to open data from that MTA webpage that used to be updated manually. And while the daily totals did not change, the share of pre-COVID ridership changed as far back um, as 2020 in ways that make no sense. So random weekend bus ridership was 200% during the lockdown. Um, could you provide some clarity on this change? Okay, I think that 200% we should just delete because that's obviously weird. Uh, there is a period where we weren't collecting bus um, bus fares at all. And so all that was basically the summer of 2020. So I don't want to say take it with a grain of salt. You shouldn't take it at all. That data isn't real. So I should, we should check, uh, Lisa, maybe just note that or, or uh, delete those or make it an NA because um, there really isn't a way to measure bus ridership when we weren't collecting the fare. Um, anyway, but in terms of why the baseline change, this is something that John and I uh, looked into a few months ago and, and ended up fixing. Um, the baseline definitely changed with that one exception of the summer of 2020 for buses, hopefully for the better. Um, what had been happening is that Every agency, this is still true, every agency reports their daily ridership uh, independently, um, you know, for better or worse, it's their own process. Uh, what was kind of problematic though is that they were also calculating their baseline uh, separately and differently. And so you couldn't really say if Long Island Railroad had what looked like a high day versus pre-COVID and Metro North had a low day, why would that be? They should have sort of similar, their ridership should move similarly. Um, and that's because they're, you know, calculate baseline differently. So, and then subways and buses were doing it anyway. So everybody was different. So it was one kind of cleanup activity was to uh, calculate a ver sort of plain vanilla 2019 baseline based on weekday and weekend ridership. Um, and so we calculated that based on 2019 uh, by month to reflect the seasonality that our ridership does see that the summers are tend to be lower than the school year, for example, um, and December is lower because of the holidays, et cetera. So anyway, we made a very like simple base on that. We can explain in a couple of sentences like that to anybody as opposed to what we were doing before and then recalculate everything. So thank you for the note on the summer 2020 with buses, but otherwise hopefully it's an improvement. Great. Yeah, so I saw something in the chat from Emily just saying that's why it changed. Uh, yeah, that's why it changed. And yes, we did update the metadata for this data set describing when the change was made and kind of the new methodology behind that. So hopefully that was helpful for people and if it, wasn't or you need help finding where to access those data set overview documents through the New York State portal, just shoot us an email at opendata at mthq.org. I should change, just mentioned like the, the numerator of that fraction didn't change. Like the agents are still reporting their same absolute ridership number every day and nothing about that has changed. We continue to report that. It's just the, it's just the denominator or like the fraction um, compared to pre-COVID that changed. Great. We have a question or two similar questions from Cameron and Sarah, who want to hear more about our plans regarding service alert data. So things like stop closures, service changes or delays. 
They say this is really important information for riders and advocates. And while it has improved, they're curious what they can expect in the pipeline. So this would be like a quasi real time, like we update it every week or as new information about future closures comes, or is this like after the fact you want to see when what was closed that you can do better, you know, reporting real time, ideally. Okay. Uh, not one that I'm working on or our team's working on currently. Um, I don't know, Lisa, if you've heard of any chance that way GTS RT will agree with the trip ID. I know, yeah, sorry. Go, go ahead, Lisa. I'll answer the last comment from Stephen afterwards. So go ahead. So I guess Cameron and Sarah, questions I have for you guys is where are you currently getting this information and what specifically would you like improved? I think that would be really helpful direction for us. So feel free to unmute yourself if you're feeling brave or just drop it in the chat. And Andy, which question did you want to answer? Oh, Subway GTFS RT trip ID will agree with the trip ID and the GTFS static file. Um, I think the real time, I mean, there's, there's basically a vendor that supplies the real time feed currently. So that's, um, I don't want to say it's completely out of our control, but it's like a little bit harder to get to than posting data after the fact. Um, but I think one thing that we can say is that um, we could, in general, for buses, but also, oh, he had an expectation about subways, for both subways and buses, um, uh, I think we could do better on uh, posting like static files um, of like, you know, when this new schedule is out, you know, station names, stop names. Um, I'm not sure we really have that. I think we have what we have, but we could um, clean that up. It would actually be helpful for us internally. This is something we are working on on the bus side uh, to have better shape files available um, for all of our own in analysis. We should be able to share that. And, um, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Cameron. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, uh, Thank you, first of all, for uh, for taking the question. Uh, and also, it has pretty dramatically improved uh, in the past like year and a half. Um, but specifically, like service changes, uh, sometimes they're modeled in the static data, sometimes they're not. Obviously, not all of them are planned in advance. And um, while we typically get like a, a pretty good text description of it, it rarely takes advantage of all of the metadata that can be communicated in GTFSRT. So I just kind of wanted to see where that was on your radar. Um, obviously, you folks have a lot on your plate, so I understand if it's uh, you know it's already a lot better than where it was a couple of years ago. Um, but just sort of curious as to where you're going with that. Yeah, and this is stuff that you access through our like MTA developers page, if I'm understanding correctly. I'm yes. Like, yeah. So, so this is kind of a separate site right now, as you know, and it's not incorporated with the New York State Data Portal, but this is definitely on my to-do list this year to start tackling that and just like moving those data sets over to the portal so that everything is shared in one place. You have to register separately right now, sign this agreement to access those developer data sets, and it's not accompanied by any metadata. Um, so I think short-term plans, that's the only real goal is to explore how to get our real-time feeds through to the state portal. And I think from there, we'll be able to start working on some improvements. And so if you do have specific asks, I'd love for you to send those to our open data email address um, so that we can take those into consideration as we improve those data sets. Andy or John, do you have anything to add to that? No. Okay. Um, great. So we have a question from our friend Eric. Hi, Eric. Are there any plans to open source more of the raw data sets and or the code with which generates the performance metrics on the open data site? That is my dream is to make the code for that site open source. I don't know if that's something that's been done at the MTU before, but the goal is for everything on that site to point to open data and then to share the code behind it. I think that would be amazing. Um, but in terms of where that stands right now, I think we are at least a year away, sadly. There's just so much work to do to clean up the open data sets, get them all on the portal, and then figure out, are we even allowed to share code <laughs> um, at the MTA? So we will see on that front. Um, a question from Mark. So are you being inspired by how open data is used for and by other agencies? Uh, a lot of my inspiration comes from, I think, city governments that are doing really well. So like our friends at New York City Open Data or just cities across the country that have really solid programs. That's where my background is in. And I think they have really led the way in open 
data programs that are successful and robust. In terms of open data from like other transit agencies, I would love if you guys have examples that you want to point us to. Um, we're always looking to make open data friends, so <laughs> feel free to connect us. Uh, but Andy or John, do you have any inspiration you want to share about open data? <laughs> Uh, I guess I would say the same thing that you just said, Lisa, which is um, we would like to know like who's doing it really well of our peers that we could basically just learn from or copy. Um, I guess my main focus, I know there's so much more that we can be doing that I'm really just kind of focused up with, focused on catching up with where I know we need to be um, rather than some other state in the future. But um, yeah, always good to have a, a guidepost. I mean, also one thing, you know, uh, similar to those that are again, open to folks doing best practice that ideally have some open source code we could use. Uh, always, always on the lookout for that. Um, we, we, you know, one thing I will say that you know, in our, in some of the stuff that I'm doing with uh, with Andy's you know support and, and his team is you know we are, for example, you know using other people's data sets in in the city. Uh, for example, we we use their open their three by one open data without talking to the city, and we use it regularly to understand where folks are reporting quality of life issues on the subways. Um, you know, something which we're, everyone I think I'm sure this call is concerned about, and we use it to, you know, summarize it in ways that maybe no one else is doing in the city to play back of them. This is where your own 311 calls are going, you know, for the NYPD, for example. Um, and so, we, you know, for me, like things like that, where we can take other people's open data and not have to talk to them, so to speak, or not arrange a private pipeline to get that data. But every, you know, I think it's twice a day we update that feed, Andy, right? And we have a map of like where we're getting reports on, you know, folks without homes or um, erratic behavior or or worse. And we can, you know, basically real time understand where things are happening out in the network, not just on our own internal methods where we have our own little reporting methods, but also integrating it with the city's data in a reliable way. And so for me, you know, that, that was a big move by the city some time ago, but to keep it maintained and updated and, you know, being open to changes like, allow us to you know, report subway locations as a location field, you know, has made a big difference. And so for me, you know, that, that, that kind of collaboration makes me feel good about what this can do collectively, not just kind of every single side level, but how we continue to use each other's data. Um, so that, I'd say, you know, a, a little related inspirational story and, and I think the importance of getting these up and maintaining them and, and being thoughtful about who the users are and trying to not predict exactly what's the most value, but putting enough out there that people can come up with new connections. We have a question from Jack about uh, of the sources already noted. So New York City open data, New York State open data, which should be considered the most authoritative for more static geospatial data sets. So subway stations, lines, entrances, et cetera. Um, I think that the data set on New York City open data is the best one. Uh, we should make sure that this is consistent though across all of these different resources we have. So maybe Zach, we can take that as a next step. Uh, okay, if I have missed your question, by the way, please just drop it in the chat again. So a question from Igor, is there any data captured regarding commuters using Omni versus traditional Metro card? Andy, you wanna take that one? There absolutely is. Okay, thank you. I'm joking. I think the question is, and can you share that, right? Uh, so we definitely do um, capture that. The the challenge, as I said, everything is sort of, um, you know, I don't know, siloed or whatever in different areas. The MetroCard group and the uh, Omni group are distinct from each other, um, which I guess is okay since the MetroCard group will, you know, not be, be here anymore once MetroCard is gone. And so you don't need to really consolidate them now. But the point is somebody needs to consolidate that data um, internally. And so uh, that's basically what we're working on right now. And uh, this is like a very key internal project for my team to create a common data set that has um, both information easy to query internally. And then once we have that, uh, we would be able to share it externally. Right now, the number that does get shared is a daily ridership number that obviously has both in it summed but it's just a single sum. It doesn't show the breakout. Um, so that's definitely something that we can do uh, in the future. We do have that. It's just a question of cleaning it up and, and having it ready to share. Right. Um, I, I do want to do a quick time check. We sorry, have about 10 minutes left. Uh, so maybe I'll do one or two more questions and then we can close out. That sounds good to you guys. 
Yeah, but if you could leave a minute at the end, uh, Lisa, I would like to mention the job openings that we have and then post the links in the chat. Yes. Okay, so let's see. Question from Peter, who works at Metro North Railroad. Uh, is there a plan or a process to engage with internal and external stakeholder operating agencies to begin to integrate or aggregate new data or new technologies deployed um, for MTA open data? So some examples are APCs, video analytics data, MTA train time ETIX data. I would say, yeah, or sorry, Andy, go ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that that's in the category of like, can we get more granular, right? So obviously with some of those things, things like e-ticks, we have to be careful not to like share any customer information. Um, but uh, a lot of the, like the first level of aggregation off those data sets would be things like, you know, more granular ridership data. Um, you know, can you see how many people, for example, uh, board at each bus stop would be something you could do with APC data on buses. Uh, that's something that we we estimate currently internally within my team, but we don't share that. That seems like a good thing to share. Um, and so I think once we're, we've rebuilt some of these pipelines that I was mentioning and are more confident the data is uh, accurate, then that's definitely something we can share. Um, the railroads in particular is a little bit tricky with knowing um, where exactly people got on. That's more of like a you know, data granularity issue. I'm not sure the data exists to really get something accurate there. Um, but there is more to share in terms of the granularity of ticketing data. I'm just not sure you'd ever see exactly like what stop folks got on, just the nature of the operation. And Peter, if this was a message as a, a volunteer to lead the process for Metro North, feel free to shoot us an email because we'd love to work with you. <laughs> good, good job uh, getting volunteers there, Lisa. Right. <laughs> Uh, okay. I'll take the pay raise with that. Sure. <laughs> John, send that over my way. Uh, great. So I know there's a few more questions in the chat. If you really want answers to those, please shoot us an email. I will drop that again in the chat for everyone to contact us. And Andy, I know you want to highlight some job openings we have that are going to help support this program. So do you want to um, give the plug? Sorry, yeah. I have like a really quick question. Oh. Oh, yeah. Um, my name is Gerardo. I work for OMB doing mobility analysis. Um, so regarding data granularity, is there any way you guys track um, the reduced fares program? Just the usage of it or, you know, how many? Yes, uh, the usage where people are, you know, which, uh, which people in the program are using which stations. Um, okay, I know how many Lisa. On the program, all of that. Okay, uh, I know Lisa. We just recently like cleaned up uh, a metric on that, but I don't think it was by station, right? It was just overall usage. Right. Yeah, percent. it's pretty aggregated. Right. Um, so the answer is like, does that data exist? The answer is yes. We do get basically the fare type, which would be things like the thirty-day Metro card or an Omni card or a you know uh, single ride ticket or reduced fare ticket. We do get that fare type with each uh, row of, of the transaction table on both uh, AFC and, and Omni, sorry, uh, MetroCard and Omni. Try not to use internal acronyms here. Um, so that data does exist. It's a, again, a granularity question. Um, basically, I think there's like a full table on ridership uh, that we're working to produce, as I mentioned, as like an internal project. Um, assuming there's, there's no uh, you know, qualms with sharing more externally, which I don't think there would be. And again, that's in the spirit of the law uh, to share more. Once that's available, uh, I think we could share a lot more on ridership than we do currently. Okay, uh, I don't, I, sorry, John, were you gonna say something? Uh, I, was, I mean, there's, there's a couple more, uh, there's some more questions sort of flooding in, which we'll kind of run out of time to handle. I, I, there, there may be a rapid fire couple of answers. Um, on there's a question in here from, um, Alex Resnick around, you know, iceberg and benchmarked agencies, you know, that, uh, that one's a little bit trickier because there's an agreement with the other agencies not to share our data um, within the benchmark groups. And that, so I, I think in, that one's, I think we'd like to show ourselves versus benchmarks and there's some public reports where we do that in, in a disguised way, but the full set of benchmarks is difficult to do because of the arrangement for the folks who participate in those groups. They kind of agree not, they will not share this with others 
um, and more for internal uh, improvements. Um, uh, the other question that, that is in here that I, I'm not totally, uh, uh, I can't give you all the details, but from Nico around how we use our data with third parties um, and, and you're trying to provide as much real-time information as possible, especially to the mapping groups on uh, with the status of trains and buses and like coming and how far away they are. Um, we have various data pipelines that do that. They can they can be better, I'm sure. There also is that in those instances, you know, we're not, we don't really know exactly how they digest it and decide to promote it and kind of their own rules on what to do with the data. You know, I will say for my, you know, I like Google Maps a lot, but I use, you know, my MTA or train time to see where my train or bus is going to be. Because uh, I know that that's like, you know, the direct pipeline from our information that is, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to make sure it gets through, up there as fast as possible. Um, so the MyMTA app, which for those who have been using it for a long time, you know, it, it's come a long way in the last year. You know, there's a lot more things that are coming in the next six months that I think will make it even better. And the the train time app that has both your know, commuter railroads on it is, you know, I think, remarkable uh, in its sort of intuitiveness and your ability to buy tickets. And we've gotten you know, great reviews since we've launched that. So I, I feel those are going much further than before. But we don't, you know, we're not trying to monopolize it. We are, we are, we are providing data to others, but we we don't know at their level of investment on getting it right. And certainly um, you know, we don't, again, we, we service them as best we can, but we can't take responsibility for how they're putting it out there versus our own app. So we're really trying to get those uh, absolutely nailed. There's one a question in here about um, MTA crime that there is a uh, NYPD does put their own you know crime results out uh, every week in their own open data version. It's a little bit, Comstat has been around for a long time. Um, and that is still, you know, ha has transit related data in there. And then MTA crime, we do report all of it in our monthly board books in the safety committee. There's a report on crime that captures both NYPD crime, re received crime, which is the subway stations in the five boroughs. The MTA crime results are largely in the commuter railroad areas, plus some of the bigger stations like Penn and Grand Central uh, and Atlantic Terminal, where we have our the MTA police force uh, does the policing. I think that was enough rapid fire that we can get in here. Uh, Andy, do you want to do a, a bit of a, a, a plug and um, and then Lisa can wrap it up? Absolutely. Um, if there are more questions, I can take those too. But uh, the I just posted three links in the chat for three different positions. One is a manager position, manager of data engineering, and two are would be like individual contributor positions you know, reporting up to that manager, senior data engineer and data engineering specialist, sort of a higher level and, and mid-level um, individual contributor role. Um, but basically, these are all data engineering focused. So as I mentioned, one of the things that the MTA uh, has struggled with the most uh, is maintaining data pipelines and automating data and basically reducing that burden to sharing more both internally and externally. Uh, so we really need uh, those roles. That's been the kind of a sticking point. So. Um, I think if we had those folks, we'd be we'd be making more progress. So the next time we had a call like this, there'd be more to talk about, and more to share, just because we'd be more um, automated and efficient. So anyway, if anyone on this call has a data engineering background or knows somebody who uh, you know enjoys and is good at data engineering and likes transit and wants to make uh, transit New York City better, you know, please forward those links and uh, or or even probably Lisa would be okay if they emailed the the open data. Uh, email address for this as a way of getting in touch with us. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, and I just want to quickly plug before I pass back to Ariana that we or you get the chance to come hang out with us again this week if you'd like. So on Thursday at 1 p.m., join us for a little workshop on how to use Python to work with and visualize MTA open data. That'll be led by our amazing team members, Dan and Renuma. Um, so yeah, I hope to see you there. We'll get more in the weeds on some of our data sets and uh, get to work with some code. Uh, make sure you register. I'll drop that link in the chat and please read the README file before the session so that you have the software installed and can fully participate.